Hi there. Today I'm going to be talking about different kinds of notes and why you might want to think about notes differently. I know that if I think about my own practice over the last few years, I've, I've really thought of all kinds of notes in the same way. Notes with the temporary scribblings that I made as part of a conference or a meeting or uh, while working through an article, um, preparing for a writing project. And the, the idea was always the same. The notes were this temporary space where I was capturing ideas that I would eventually delete as those ideas moved into the real thing, um, the, the important thing that I was working on. And what I came to realize after you know many years of, of working as an academic is that this process was really um, not conducive to helping me move ideas from the conception phase to the completed phase where they would be um, integrated into an output like an article or a conference presentation or a grant application. And so I started looking at this idea of note taking in a, in a more formal structured way and I realized that my way of thinking about notes was really ad hoc and, uh, and not very useful. And uh, I, I started thinking about this more seriously last year when I put together a, a seminar for some of our undergraduate students called How to Take Notes. And I realized as part of that process that my own note taking uh, left a lot to be desired. And uh, that led me to a book by Zonka Arendt called How to Take Smart Notes. And that book had a really profound impact on the way that I think about notes. And I think one of the most important principles, I guess, that Arendt talks about is this idea that the note is central to everything that we try to do as knowledge workers. And as I said in that quote at the beginning, every project begins with a note. And for, for myself over the last year, I've tried to think about different kinds of notes that I take and how I can structure those notes in different ways that uh, make it a lot more useful for me to, to take that information and move it into things that, that I actually care about. So today I'm going to give a, a very brief overview of four different kinds of notes that I use as part of my daily practice. There are others and maybe I'll get to those in a different time. And the other thing that I should note at the beginning is that these notes uh, or the applications that I'm showing you today are really just overviews. Um, it's to demonstrate how each type of note is different to the other and how we can structure them in different ways, how we can think about notes in different ways. It's not to give a deep dive into each one of these applications. I'm trying to demonstrate principles so that you can use any applications that suit you. I'm not suggesting that the apps that I'm using are going to be suitable for you. Um, I'll talk about that in a little bit of uh, detail as, as I go through each one of these apps. So in theory, you should be able to substitute these apps with others that you may be more familiar with. So don't think that this is a, a, an introduction to applications and how to use these applications. It's really just an introduction to four different kinds of notes and how when you look at it like this, you can see how they are fundamentally different. So I, I hope that this is useful. Let's get into it. This is the first kind of note that I uh, that I use every day. Uh, this is called a daily note. Some people would just think of this as a journal or a calendar entry. I think it's quite different to those things in some ways in that a daily note can be structured in any way that you think is going to be useful for your own practice. So there are some things that I need as part of my daily note that normal journal uh, applications are not going to provide, calendar applications don't provide, to-do lists don't provide. And trust me, I have worked with a lot of these applications and I haven't found any of them that really fulfills my needs for a daily note. These daily notes I call admin notes and there are different kinds of admin notes that uh, I think about. So a daily note for me is one kind of ad admin note. There are other admin notes that I'll show you um, now, and these are mainly review notes. You can also have project notes, um, but I'll, I'll talk about those another time when I do a deep dive into admin notes. So this for me is the basic kind of admin note. You can see it's got a to-do list. It's got time blocks, uh, and these are obviously um, editable, so you can restructure this however you want. You can see that these are my uh, to-do list items for next week, Tuesday. I've already got all of the things that I know that I want to do on that day. I've blocked the first half of my day, which should help me to get through most of this. And then I leave a little bit of time at the end of the day for me to do anything that's come in over the weekend. 
this is where I can take my own notes. So if a meeting comes up, uh, if I get a phone call and there's something that I quickly need to jot down, that comes in here. And then I create to-do list items for subsequent days of the week. So you can see I can work through the different days of next week. This is the seventh um, Wednesday. Um, so this is basically what I want to do. Then the Thursday, there's not much going on all the way through to the Friday. So this is just my structure for, um, for a, a daily note. Other people have different structures. Now, the other thing that I like to do is a weekly review. So a weekly review, I have a certain number of items that I like to get through on a Friday. And this means that I can go into the weekend with a clear head. I don't have to worry about work. I know that everything that needed to get done in the week has been done. I can do this particular app um, is called Obsidian. It allows you to do this. Uh, it's got a feature called Transclusion. What that means is that I can take all of my daily notes for that week, add them over here, and then... It basically just expands the whole the whole note. So as part of my weekly review, I go through every daily note that I've taken. I make sure that everything is ticked off. If everything isn't ticked off, I can move it into to-do lists for the following week. I go through all of my notes. I make sure that all of these notes have uh, led to some kind of uh, to-do list item, some kind of task item, whether that's an email that needs to get sent or maybe at the start of a project note as is the case for um, some of these things here. So this is a project application I need to go through. Um, and the idea is that by the end of the week, I'll have gone through everything that's happened over, the, over the, the, the previous few days, and I'll go into the weekend knowing that I've got nothing else to, um, uh, no other work that's going to uh, distract me from, from my weekend, from my time off. I also do a monthly review. And so at the end of every month, I know that there's a list of things that I really have to do um, that are very important. And I'll make sure that I put in time probably over days or, or even weeks to complete these items. And then I have a brief summary at the end of every month where I can say, this is what I did this week. This is what I did this week. And this helps me to, again, make sure that every month I'm moving through the year, I'm, I'm ticking off all the things that I've said are important to me. And what this really helps me to do is to make sure that I identify what's important and then to set aside time to make sure that I work on the things that are important. So this is why writing is a standing order, uh, a standing item for every day. So every day I try to have something in my writing list that I can do a little bit of work on, whether that's data extraction, data analysis, or working on a draft of an article. Every day I try to move one of my writing projects forward. That way every week I get to look back and I can see, yes, I've made progress on these writing tasks, which are important to me. And every month I can say whether or not I've managed to complete the, um, the things that are important. Because otherwise what happens is you get to the end of the month and you realize that uh, you've actually run out of time. And so when you, you start by saying, what are the things I value? What are the things that are important to me as part of a knowledge, uh, as part of knowledge work? Then I can actually start by making time for those things without ever having, having to worry about running out of time. I start with those things and then I slot in the other little things um, after that. Another thing that's maybe worth pointing out, but I'll get into, into detail a little bit later, is that you'll see that there's no folders for any of these admin notes. It's just one long list. And you might think that's crazy. How are you going to find anything? Um, when I do a deep dive into admin notes, I will show why you don't actually need any folders. So those are my admin notes. That's a basic kind of note. I use templates for all of these things, which means that I decide again up ahead that writing is important. And then I put that into my daily notes template. I don't have to redo these uh, outlines every, every day that I do it. Okay, so those are my admin notes. Big, big kind of note that I work on. The next kind of note is a temporary note. Now, a temporary note is something that I know I'm gonna delete. It's a way for me to capture something that is, it's an idea while I'm driving, so it's a voice note, or it's a note that I take um, while I'm reading a, a blog post. Um, it's a copy and paste, a dump. It's something that I'm not going to think about in any detail at the moment. Um, it's going to be something that I come back to, that I reflect on. It may be just a URL. This is a collection of notes that I took ages ago, maybe even two years ago. And what I realized is that I was, I was taking notes 
as part of reviewing these resources, and I was just putting them all into the same place. So my my daily notes, my kind of everyday to-do list items were mixed in with my temporary notes, which I knew I was going to delete at some point. It was mixed in with notes that I was taking while I was working through literature. And it was notes on things that I wanted to keep permanently. These things were all mixed together into this one app. I'm using Joplin. This is an app called Joplin. But you could substitute this with Evernote or any other note-taking app, really. And I found it was really problematic in just lumping all of these things together um, because they really are fundamentally different in how you structure them, how you work with them, and what you ultimately do with them. So the, the daily notes are things that I'm probably not going to go back and look at. You know, once I've gotten through the day, gotten through the week, gotten through the month, those are not things that I'm going to go back. They're kind of really there just as a um, kind of legacy information, historical data, but I'm not going to delete those. These notes are things that I absolutely will delete. So if I just look at my inbox, an inbox is a place where I can just dump things um, that I know I need to go back with. So here is just, it's a URL and I've made a very short note from this uh, URL. I'm going to think about that a little bit and I'm going to move it into my permanent notes, which is the, the last set of notes that I'm going to talk about. So the temporary notes are what I think of as capture. It needs to, whatever app I use, it needs to allow me to cap, capture information really quickly and then I can move on. So I can get it out, out of my head. I'm not worried about forgetting about it. And I know that I'm going to come back at some point and look through this. I use an inbox, which is where I dump notes and either I'm going to move those notes somewhere else um, as part of my weekly review or I'm going to go through all of these URLs and um, extract what I need to know and, and put them into either my permanent notes or my literature notes, uh, which I'll get to next. But the idea with these um, uh, temporary notes is that it's very clear that this is a place for me to dump things quickly so that I can move on as part of my day. I don't need to worry about them. I've captured them. I'll get to them when I have time. So that's what a temporary note is. Just remember that the ultimate outcome of every temporary note is to be deleted. Well, at least this is the way that, that I think about it. Not everyone is going to have the same approach, but you'll see that um, in, in the knowledge work community, this is generally how people think about these temporary notes. This is a literature note. Now, I used to think of a literature note as the, uh, the, the set of notes that I would take as part of reviewing a resource that would ultimately let me uh, complete something that I really care about, like a grant application or a paper. And so I would delete these notes. And that I've since realized is problematic because the whole point of having these notes is that you can come back to them and you can link them to new ideas. So if, I'm, if I look at this note, first of all, this is uh, Zotero. Zotero is the application that I use for my reference management. Um, I've actually, since uh, maybe in the last six months, I've started using Zotero as a bookmark manager. And I'll talk about that in another, um, another video. The, the idea is that uh, you, most people would use Zotero as a PDF uh, reference manager. And I realized that I was really missing out on a lot of the, uh, the, the value of Zotero by using it only for, for PDFs. Now I use it for almost everything that I care about, where it's videos, presentations, uh, blog posts, everything that I think I might want to refer back to at some point comes into Zotero. And then I make notes. And uh, this is a set of notes that I made as part of watching this uh, video. And uh, what I will at some point do is go through these literature notes and move that into my permanent notes. And, and that's the, the next kind of notes that I talk about. Um, so these are just the notes that I take while I'm working through an article. Zotero has a, a really great feature through an extension where you can take your all of your highlights and annotations that you make on a PDF and you can extract it um, as part of its own set of notes. So literature notes are the notes that you take as part of working through any resource that you think might have value for your academic work at some point in the future. And as I say, I, I used to delete these notes as soon as I was finished the article or finished the conference presentation. And, and now I've realized this is actually a type of permanent note 
which I'm always going to keep. And I'm going to try and find relationships between these notes and other notes. And the, the place that I do that is in uh, an app called Obsidian. Uh, and uh, these are my permanent notes. So permanent notes are the notes that I, uh, that I take in my own words after having worked through a literature note. Um, that's one way of doing it. It also might be um, a truism or something that I hear in passing or something that I reflect on or something that just comes to me. The, the whole point of these permanent notes is that they're written in my words. They represent my unique understanding of uh, some concept uh, or idea. I'm going to do a deep dive into what permanent notes uh, not, not should be, um, but how you might think about structuring a permanent note so that it has the most long-term value. Um, and so you can see in Obsidian, it allows you to link between notes. So if I just mouse over these links, it shows me what that note looks like um, and uh, what I was thinking about when I, when I took the note. It gives you a place for your references. These notes don't have many references. I know that this particular quote is from uh, How to Take Smart Notes. So I'll probably just add that. I'll just give you an example maybe. Um, I'll go here to my literature note, how to take smart notes. Here's the book. And there is a shortcut key for this, but I don't remember it. I'll go back to, oh, back to my permanent note, edit, reference, dump that in. So now I've got a permanent uh, citation that shows me where I got that information from. So those are, those are the four main kinds of notes that I work in every day. As I said, I'm going to, I'm going to do a, 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 a deep dive into each one of these kinds of notes and talk about how I use the apps to, to structure my notes in different ways depending on what I'm going to be doing with them. But that's it. That's my overview of admin notes, literature notes, temporary notes, and permanent notes. I hope that this is useful. I hope that it stimulates you to think about your own note-taking practice and to think about whether or not you should be using different apps for different kinds of notes that you're interested in. Maybe not. Maybe it works for you to keep them all in one place. That's something that I tried for many years, and it, it, it kind of worked on an ad hoc uh, basis, but it really wasn't very um, really wasn't very useful in terms of stimulating the kind of creative cross-linking of ideas that I'm interested in as part of a knowledge worker. It wasn't very useful in making me more productive. I found that a lot of my time was spent uh, just managing information. And, and I find that this new system of using different applications for different nodes helps me to keep things relatively separated. And, and that means that I'm jumping around between things a, a lot less. I can be more focused with the, the work that I'm doing because I'm not moving around between uh, to-do lists and uh, notes that don't really matter, half-formed ideas, and, and the, the kind of permanent notes that I'm trying to use as part of my writing practice. So that's it. That's how I think about these four kinds of notes and the different apps that I use. I really hope that this has been useful. Uh, if it has been useful, you may want to subscribe because I'm thinking of producing a lot more of these kinds of videos, just different ways that I think about academic work and, and knowledge work. Um, yeah, I hope it's been useful. Uh, see you soon. Cheers. Bye.